what were the reasons behind and or causes of the formation of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth? They're very interesting. I'm interested in political union as a phenomenon in history that is often neglected. The standard mode of writing political history is about the rise of the nation state. And yet if you go back to late medieval and early modern Europe, political unions were very common. A lot of them were short-lived, lasting one reign, 10 years. Poland was in a union, political union with Hungary for a very short period in the 14th century, and that fell apart. But there are political unions that lasted, and the Polish-Lithuanian Union lasted for a very long time. It was only in 2013 that the Anglo-Scottish Union um, passed it for longevity. That seems to me is a remarkable phenomenon, and yet the Polish-Lithuanian Union was almost absent from textbooks on European history. And when you look at it, it becomes clear that this was a union that if you'd been a betting man in 1386 when it began, you would not have thought would have lasted for over 400 years. Lithuania and Poland were very, very different states. Scotland and England at least spoke similar languages. They were on the same island. They had existed together for a large number of years. And the question of the relationship of Scotland and England had been a long-running problem. Poland and Lithuania were very different. Poland was a Latin, Western power. Um, it was well integrated into Catholic Christendom. It spoke a Slavic language, Polish. Lithuania, which in the, on the map in the background is the large yellow part. Poland is the sort of fawn bit to the left, and Lithuania is the large yellow country to the right. Lithuanians were, spoke a Baltic language, which is not Slavic at all. And the Grand Duchy of Lithuania was a very interesting state. The Lithuanians themselves were pagans. It was the last pagan-ruled state in Europe. And they only converted to Christianity as a result of the Polish-Lithuanian Union. They became Catholic in thir after 1386. But the Grand Duchy of Lithuania also included large numbers, in fact a majority, of Eastern Orthodox Slavs who spoke Ruski, a language which one can call Ruthenian in English these days, but which is the ancestor of modern Ukrainian and modern Belarusian. And yet, in the period after the Mongol invasion, this small pagan tribe from the northeastern corner of Europe swept up the lands of many of the lands of old Kievan Rus destroyed by the Mongols and produced this conglomerate state that stretched pretty much from the Baltic to the Black Sea. And yet, by the end of the 14th century, the Lithuanian state was coming under a great deal of pressure. It was being attacked from the west by the Teutonic Knights, and it was competing with the Grand Duchy of Muscovy for the Orthodox Slavic peoples under it, lands under its control. For 150 years, the Lithuanians had kept being pagan, partly to maneuver between the Catholic West and the Orthodox East. They kept promising to convert to one or the other. At times, the rulers did convert, only to renege on their conversion. But by the 1380s, this was no longer sustainable. Sounds almost like an issue, to some extent anyway, of political expediency. It was a politically expedient relationship as it began, and it began with a marriage. The 44-year-old Grand Duke of Lithuania, Jogaila, a pagan, married the 14-year-old da daughter of the last king of Poland, Jadwiga, um, on condition that he converted to Catholicism and converted his people to Catholicism. And that marriage took place in early 1386, and it instituted this 400-year political union. Well, in that very full answer, 
you mentioned and alluded to a lot of the things which will no doubt have affected the dynamic and structure of the relationship between Poland and Lithuania once the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth came into being. I wonder whether you could just elaborate slightly more on some of the practical results of those. The Union was, to my mind, although not all historians, particularly of Lithuania, Ukraine and Belarus, agree with me, the Union was, in many respects, a great success, and that is why it lasted. The problem of the Teutonic Knights was dealt with. Uh, Poland had been at peace with the Teutonic Knights since 1343, but gradually, because of the relationship with Lithuania, the Poles were pulled into war, and in 1410, the Battle of what's known in English usually as Tannenberg, Grunwald in Polish, Żalgiris in Lithuanian, um, the combined armies of Poland and Lithuania absolutely destroyed the army of the Teutonic Knights, more or less wiping out the whole leadership of the order. There were, however, many problems in the relationship. The Poles, who regarded themselves as culturally superior to these originally pagan Lithuanians, believed that the Acts of Union of 1385 had incorporated Lithuania into the Polish kingdom. The Lithuanians objected to this view of the Union, and in a series of uh, discussions and redrawings of the Union, they made it clear that from the Lithuanian point of view, this was a relationship of equals. And despite tense relations between the two powers over the next century and a half, in 1569, in a remarkable um, political event, the Union was transformed into a very different kind of union, what one can call a real union, although I believe that the union was in many respects a real union before 1569, in which the two parliaments joined together to form one parliament with two states, the Polish state, the Kingdom of Poland, and the Lithuanian Grand Duchy of Lithuania, from which in 15. 69, as part of the very, very tense negotiations over Union, the southern Ruthenian Palatinates, what is now largely Ukraine, formed their own Union with the Poles, and so became part of the Kingdom of Poland. And that's what finally forced the Lithuanians in March 15, after March 1569 to accept the Polish terms for Union, which allowed the Lithuanians to keep their state keep their own army, keep their own office holders, and yet be part of this fraternal union, as they called it, to form a republic, one republic. So Poles, Lithuanians, Ruthenians were equal citizens of one republic, if they were noblemen. And that was a very interesting model. It would seem to me that as far as the Polish-Lithuanian union was concerned, one of the major practical results was that it actually enabled the successes of the initial military adventures, as it were, that first followed the Union. And would it therefore be right to say that you would feel it was at least m much more unlikely that military success would have happened in quite the same way if the Union had not existed? It would not have happened in the same way. The Lithuanians, in military terms, could not stand out on their own against the Teutonic Knights. They were, it was a very sparsely populated country. They were not large enough or powerful enough. And the Teutonic Knights were driving up the rivers towards them, taking fortress after fortress, building their own fortresses, pushing forward into the forests of northeastern Europe. So it would not have lasted. But it was not really in military terms that or the military explanation is not really the reason why the Union survived. After the 1420s, the interests of Poland and Lithuania in foreign policy actually diverged. And what really brought them together was this republican model of a decentralized parliamentary system in which 
the parliament, the Polish Sejm, developed in the course of the 14th, sorry, 15th century into a body which was elected by local, what one can call diatines, the term in Polish is sejmik, that were rooted in the locality, and they sent their envoys or delegates to the central parliament with instructions. And so it was not a representative parliament in the modern sense. It was more like the assembly of the Dutch Republic. These were delegates who were sent to the central parliament with instructions. And this was a model that was attractive within the Grand Duchy of Lithuania before 1569, because after the king, the Grand Dukes of Lithuania effectively moved to Poland to rule from Kraków, the Lithuanians were governed by a very small elite of great magnates. And the ordinary Lithuanian nobility, who had no political recourse against them, actually started pressing as they, as they got more involved in wars with the Grand Duchy of Muscovy and therefore had to pay lots of taxes and serve in the army. They said, we want a voice in this like the Poles. And the immediate pressure for union came in 1566, when the Second Lithuanian Statute established a Polish system of sejmiks and locally elected land courts across the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. So it was a decentralized system, and that's in many respects why the Union could work. 